Hi, this is JP from Not Alliance Over Arkham. This time in Unexpected Courage series, I will be playing Jenny Barnes, and Jenny will be tackling the 1B scenario from the from the Dunwich Legacy Deluxe expansion box. As per this series, I am limited in my card pool to two core sets and the current Deluxe box I am playing, so in this case the Dunwich Legacy Deluxe box. So, uh, let's first look at what kind of deck Jenny has for this scenario. In hand slots uh, there is quite a lot of stuff, uh, mainly because I want to get uh, either flashlights or magnified glasses down. Uh, when I need to start investigating the later half of this scenario. Uh, the 41 derringers are in there only because uh, if I am not able to evade enemies, I have to have some ways to kill them or defeat them. I didn't have room for guns from the Guardian class. The ally for this deck is of course Leo de Luca, which is a really strong ally from the core set. Uh, I am running two copies of Hard Knox and two copies of Hyper Awareness. This is because both of those give me agility boost with the resources and Hard Knox gives me fight boost if needed and uh, Hyper Awareness gives me uh, intellect boost for investigating when needed. Then, because I'm going evasive heavy, I've added two copies of pickpocketing. Also, elusive is a strong card, and remember that I am not playing taboo list, so this is uh, the cards as written, so no taboo cards or anything like that. And uh, saying that, I also have one copy of double or nothing in the deck. It's not gonna be a game breaker with these cards I am using, uh, but I could need it to grab maybe two clues from a location or maybe to pass a, a difficult uh, fighting check to deal two damage or something like that. Of course, um, I'm using a lot of the basic skills, two guts. Two manual dexterities, two perception, and of course two unexpected courage cards. Uh, as I mentioned, I have one card from the Guardian, and it's Dynamite Blast. And this is just because if I'm swarmed with enemies, uh, I hopefully have this in hand, and Jenny doesn't usually have problems uh, paying those resources for the Dynamite Blast, and that might help us get away from a hard situation. Then I have two copies of Backstab, just in case um, I could, because I have a, a lot of evasive uh, or agility boost in the Hyper and Awareness and Hard Knocks, uh, Backstab could be really efficient to deal 3 damage to an enemy with your agility. And my basic weakness for this deck was randomized, and it's the internal injury from the Dunwich Deluxe box, so fitting for this playthrough. I think uh, the goal of this deck is to evade en enemies, uh, run away from them and hopefully have some uh, clue tech in play to get the clues in the later part of the uh, scenario and in the earlier part there are a lot of ways to get clues and one is to have a lot of resources so that might be really useful that Jenny has a lot of resources use. So uh, we start at La Bella Luna. There is already one clue there. And uh, Jenny's stat line, I didn't talk about it in the deck uh, overview, is 3333. So Jenny is the first generalist in the game with a stat line that is all trees. So not really good in anything, but not poor in anything. So you can build Jenny in many ways. Build Jenny as a fighter easily, 
uh, just add a lot of weapons and ways to boost your combat. But I decided to try the uh, evasive Jenny and investigative Jenny as I'm playing through solo. So let's see how this goes and uh, let's get started. I have pre-shuffled the decks. Uh, we'll draw our opening hand. So I get the Jenny's Twin 45s, Magnifying Glass, Hard Knocks, Big Pocketing and uh, Emergency Cash. I am not really needing the weapon at the start. Other than that, well, uh, Big Pocketing is quite really important so we'll try to find something else useful so let's draw two more cards uh, we get the hyper awareness and Leo the look up so really good start so I think our plan is to uh, get Leo down as fast as possible and try to investigate this location to get this clue before the pit, pit boss comes in and uh, stops us from investigating. So, uh, first action, I'll gain one. Uh, first action, I actually play the emergency cash. So, I'll gain three resources. Second action, I'll play Leo. And we'll get an extra action from Leo to use. And this is quite powerful as you get Leo on the first turn. If you can keep Leo alive, you basically have uh, one more action for the duration of the game, and that's really powerful. Uh, next action, well, actually, it's a fast action, so I'll play the magnifying glass down. And I'll try to investigate uh, 4 versus 2 so the bag is quite uh, heavy with uh, minus 2 or better tokens so uh, the cultist is a minus 3 but uh, and there's a minus 3 and minus 4 so we have a quite good chance as 2 up succeed in this test and we get the minus two so I might spend resources to treat this as zero but I don't need to so I'll get gain this blue and um, last action we really don't want to move in before the pit boss comes out so that uh, the pit boss has a longer way to follow us so I'll actually gain one resource so I don't really need anything else for my last action. Uh, we go to the enemy phase. The pit boss hunts here. And in this scenario, the first agenda gives the uh, criminal enemies aloof. And aloof means they won't engage you unless you engage them. And uh, they will lose the aloof eventually, but at the start they are not really uh, hostile against us. So, the enemy turn is done, we will go to upkeep, we draw a card, we get manual dexterity, and we gain two resources, as Jenny always gets two resources. And that is the first turn, let's go to the next turn. Uh, we add a doom to the agenda, uh, the threshold is four, the encounter card is Swarm of Rats. So the Swarm of Rats engages us. Well, uh, luckily Jenny is quite good at dealing with uh, the Swarm of Rats. So I think first action uh, we'll just uh, hit the Swarm of Rats 3 versus 1. We really don't need any boost for this yet. It's a minus one. The rats are defeated. So we only lost one action for the rats. That's okay. 
Second action, I'll play the Hyper Awareness. And uh, last action, no, last action. Thir third action is to move to the Clover Club Lounge. Uh, Clover Club Lounge has the, while it is F1, Clover Club Lounge gains action discard an ally asset from your hand, gain two clues from the token pool, limit one spur game, but we don't have an ally to discard, so we'll head to the Clover Club bar and uh, Clover Club bar has the text uh, three shroud, zero clues, while it is act one, uh, Clover Club bar gains action, spend two resources, gain two clues from the token pool and draw one two cards. Remember that you have had a drink limit once per game. So we're definitely doing that next turn and then heading to gamble in the card room. Uh, that is the investigative phase. Uh, we'll go to the enemy phase so the hit boss uh, hunts to the Clover Club launch. We go to upkeep. Uh, we get backstab. We gain two resources and that is all we can do. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We add another Doom. So two of four. The encounter card is uh, Twists of Fate. Reveal a random token from the Chaos Pack. If it's an Elder, sign symbol or positive number, nothing happens. If you reveal any other number, take one damage. If you reveal a special token, take two horror. So, uh, because Jenny has more health than Sanity, we are hoping to hit them. Uh, at least not a special symbol. And there are only uh, four special symbols in the back, so we have a bigger chance of hitting uh, zero. And actually zero is a positive number, so nothing happens. So, lucky us. We start our investigation phase. So first action I'll take a drink. So I'll gain two clues from the token bank. Second action we'll move to the lower club card room. It's a three shot occasion. While it is act uh, one, lower club card room gains um, action. Spend two resources. Reveal a random chaos token. If it's a uh, elder uh, Sign symbol, gain two clues and two resources. If it's an even number, gain two clues or from the token pool. If it's an odd number or a special token, nothing happens. So, uh, let's get ready to gamble. Uh, first, I'll... I still don't need any of these in play and uh, these are irrelevant. So we'll spend two um, resources to gamble. And really hoping to hit this on the first try, keep the tempo going. <laughs> and it's an Elder sign, so super lucky. We gain two resources, we gain two clues. And... Uh, oh yeah, uh, we took a drink, so we also drew two cards from the Clover Club bar. So I forgot to do. But we're still in the same turn, so uh, we get two perceptions. These are really useful for the next part. Uh, let's check. Uh, so, when the investigators have collected the requisite number of clues, they must immediately spend them and advance. So I'm spending the four clues right away. So. High roller. After speaking to a number of game gamblers and servers, it seems that though Dr. Morgan has had quite the run lately, instead of ca chasing out his winnings, uh, cashing out his winnings, he was convinced to double down. He was last seen entering the guarded hall near the back of the guard guard room. Put the set aside darkened hall into play. If it's Agenda 1, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a criminal enemy is discarded and spawn that enemy in the darkened hall. Okay, so we have the set aside. Ok, 
locations here. Let's spawn the dark control here. And uh, we discard cards until we hit the criminal enemy because it's still agenda one. Well, uh, we immediately hit the Obanion Thug. And Obanion Thug comes into play. It's standing in the darkened hall. And we must remember that the criminal enemies still have aloof. So we really don't have to care about that guy for, uh, for a turn. And this goes here. Next we have Agenda 2A. In game, Dr. Morgan is somewhere in the private section of the club where only VIPs and the club manager can, are allowed. If you are to find him, you're going to have to sneak or even fight your way. Objective, only investigators in the VIP area may spend the required number of clues as well to advance and we need two clues. So we already have one, so it will be easy to get the last clue, but uh, we'll move as a last action to the darkened hall. Uh, darkened Hall is a 4 shot location with 0 clues forced when the Darkened Hall is revealed, put into play set the set aside uh, back hall doorway locations. So we'll get these cards and we'll shuffle these up. And these are all connected to the darkened hall. And now we need to find the uh, VIP area and get a clue from somewhere. But that's the investigation phase, enemy phase. Uh, this guy is aloof and doesn't do anything, but the pit boss will hunt. So the pit boss moves to the card room and is uh, after us. Uh, we go to upkeep phase, we draw a card, we get another backstep, and we gain two resources. So that is that turn, let's go to the next turn. We are at four, uh, 3 or 4 doom, so next turn we will advance and then we really don't want to be near any criminals and counter card. But this turn is cursed lock. Uh, put cursed lock into play in your threat area. You get minus one skill value during this test. Uh, your skill tests forced after you succeed at least uh, at the skill test by one or more discard curse lock. Okay, well, uh, I think with the hyper awareness and a bunch of resources, we can easily get rid of the curse lock with an investigate test later. Uh, so uh, I think we'll start from the bottom. So let's move here as first action. And we find the back alley. So there's a. Let's uh, see. There it's a one shroud, one clue. Uh, resign, we can get out this way. So it also has a victory one. But this is not really the location we want to uh, investigate at the moment. So let's uh, use another action to move back, another action to go here. Okay, so we found the VIP area. Uh, VIP area, three shroud, one clue. Uh, while you are in the VIP area, you cannot draw cards or gain resources during the upkeep phase. So you really don't want to spend a lot of time here, but uh, for this, for now, we have to uh, at least get the clue from here and uh, advance the act. So last action, I think I'm investigating. So I'm investigating four versus three minus one. So three versus three, I'll use one perception. So I'm uh, five, six, uh, 
versus three. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm three versus three at, uh, with the first lock, so I'm uh, five versus three, and I'll use two resources to be. Seven versus three, and it's a minus one. Uh, we get a card from perception. We'll gain this clue, and we get rid of the curse lock. Then uh, we can spend the clues in the VIP area. So I'll spend both of these clues. Doctor Morgan's fate. Uh, if you are, if the player has not completed. A Extracurricular activity we have haven't. Uh, you find Dr. Morgan gambling in one of the VIP rooms, uh, put, but he appears to be playing cards with two unconscious bodies. His pupils dilated as though in a trance. He can't seem to stop la laughing, smiling, and chatting with the other players. Put the set aside Dr. Morgan into play in the VIP area. Advance to Act 3A All In. Okay, so we advance to All In. And we'll get uh, Dr. Francis Morgan here. Okay, and uh, all in. With or without Dr. Morgan, you have to get out of here fast. While Dr. Morgan is not controlled by a player, he gains action parlay. Test uh, will free to shake Dr. Morgan out of his days. If you succeed, place one clue from the token back on him. If there are one clues per investigator on Dr. Morgan, take control of him. Objective if an if each undefeated investigator has resigned at dance. So, uh, we have now two resigned places, La Bella Luna and the back, back alley. And uh, next turn we need to uh, get this uh, Dr. Francis Morgan in our control. So, uh, we go to enemy phase, the pit boss hunts here. Nothing else happens, we go to upkeep, uh, we draw a card, we get dynamite blast. <laughs> really useful in a moment. Uh, sorry, we don't get any cards actually. So I'll just shuffle this back because it would be a stupid thing to know that the card is uh, the dynamite blast. Uh, I forgot that while we are in the VIP area, I cannot draw cards or gain resources during the upkeep phase. So, unfortunately, I got uh, perception, uh, but I didn't get the card in the upkeep phase. And the reason I shuffled the deck is because I had the I know that there is the dynamo blast on top, so I just could draw a card. But now I don't know because a random deck is random, so it's okay to shuffle if you make a mistake like that. And uh, that is the upkeep. So let's get to the next round. Uh, we add a Doom, so we are at 4 of 4 Doom, and the agenda advances on the right track. Your question, questioning has drawn the attention of several men. Hired thugs by the look of them. Francis doesn't want to be bothered, one of them says. We suggest you leave the premises before we force you to. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. If the players have completed the extra curriculum, Activity advance directly to agenda 2B, but we haven't, so we advance agenda 2A. And now the criminal enemies don't have a loop anymore, so we have to deal with those. So we just give the deck a quick shuffle. And we draw the encounter card for this turn, and we get arousing suspicions. Revelation, place one doom on each criminal enemy at your location. If no doom was placed by this effect, lose two resources. So, unfortunately, we lose two resources. And uh, now 
we need to somehow pass on in uh, will power three test. So we are three versus three. We don't have any willpower boosts in hand. Uh, we don't have any weights boosted. So I think first action I'll draw a card. Searching for easy. Uh, what a shame. So I touch the searching for easy to the location farthest from you. And it's La Bella Luna. Actually, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, well, we'll do a second action to draw another card. Another magnifying glass, so that's that useful. I think I'll just try to uh, pass the willpower test. So it's three versus three. It's a cultist. A minus three. If you succeed, gain three resources. We don't succeed. Uh, last action. I'll try one last time. Then we have to hopefully get something else. And it's an Elder Sign, so it's a uh, plus one for each resource you have, so plus two, so we are able to place one clue on the Francis Morgan from the token pool. And uh, we take control of Dr. Francis Morgan. So, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Francis Morgan takes up an ally slot, so we have to discard Leo de Luca to have room for the Dr. Francis Morgan. And that is that, so we have to make do with three resources from now on. Uh, we'll go to the enemy phase. The pit boss moves in, engages us, and hits us for two damage. So I'll take it on Dr. Francis Morgan. And uh, that is the enemy phase. We go to upkeep. We draw. We don't draw a card or gain resources. So that is that. So let's go to the next round. Uh, we add a doom to the agenda. Yeah. Uh, the threshold is three. So one of three doom. Then counter card is mobster retaliate. Forced after mobster attacks, you lose one resource. Okay. Uh, Unfortunately, we are uh, really hurting with all of these enemies, so I think we need to start invading them somehow. Luckily, we have good cars for evasion, so let's see how, what we can do. Uh, first action, I think I'm uh, evading the pit boss. I'll use manual dexterity for the evasion. So I'm evading 5 versus... Three. So remember, it's really good to be two up in this uh, test in this uh, campaign. So we are uh, two up. It's a minus one. Uh, the pit boss is evaded. Second action, we'll evade the mobster. Oh, yeah, and we draw a card. Uh, we don't have time to play pickpocket, so I'm committing uh, backstab and pickpocket to the test. So, yeah, um, let's knock off a couple of other tokens. So I'm three up, so five versus two. And it's another fail. So, unfortunately, we fail, but I think we need to get uh, away from this pit boss because uh, too many enemies is not nice. So, last action will take an attack of opportunity and uh, we'll move here. So, uh, this enemy also engages us. Just move this a bit like so. And we go to enemy phase. The pit boss doesn't do anything. These guys hit me for three damage. Uh, really <laughs> hurting. So uh, we still have plenty of health left. So not that big of a deal yet. 
uh, we go to upkeep we draw two card uh, one card we get the manual dexterity and now we get the resources that we because we got out of the vip area so next turn hopefully we can evade both of these and move to the back alley to resign but that is that turn let's go to the next turn we add another doom encounter card for these journeys a swarm of rats well of course we get an enemy really <laughs> Really getting unlucky with all of these enemies, so it is what it is. But uh, first action, we will evade the Obanion thug. Oh yeah, uh, we uh, this guy hit us twice, so we lost two resources. So um, I messed up a bit. So after monster attacks, you lose one resource. So. We took one attack of opportunity and another damage in the enemy phase, so two resources and... Okay, and while Obanion thought is engaged with you, you cannot gain resources, so he didn't get even these resources, so let's back up a bit. So, <laughs> we are now playing poor Jenny. No resources, but uh, it is what it is. I'll start by... Uh, I'll start by... Uh, evading the Obanion Thug. I'm evading uh, 5 versus 2. It's a minus 1. So uh, this should be ready, so I'll just move this here. Then I will punch the rats, and uh, just to be sure, I'll, I'll use Hard Knocks and uh, uh, actually, I'll just use the Derringer. Uh, did I draw from the... I didn't... I probably didn't draw from the... Or did I draw... Well, let's say I drew... I'm, I'm not sure, so I won't draw again. Because I think I drew the Derringer just now. Yeah, probably. So I'll commit the Derringer. So I'm hitting uh, 4 versus 1 on the rats. So good thing we um, boosted our test, so uh, we succeed. 4 versus 1, minus 3 is... Uh, we still succeed 1 versus 1. We'll gain 3 resources from the cultist token. The rats are dead. And uh, last action, we'll take an attack of opportunity, lose a resource and move to the back alley. Okay, uh, enemy phase, the mobster uh, is still engaged with us, and we have a wrong token here. Okay, so we lose another resource and take one damage. So we took one and take one the enemy phase. And uh, that is the enemy phase, so upkeep the beat boss hunts to the darkened hall. Uh, Banyan thug readies. And we gain one card and we gain two resources. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. Uh, we add a doom so the agenda advances again. And in a moment you'll see that this is actually a good thing that it advances, so... Sudden chaos. You hear a crash from somewhere outside and screams of pain in the lounge. Terrible monstrosity shakes, uh, uh, smashes through the entrance to the club, crushing the stairwell and knocking over gangsters and patrons alike. Spawn a random enemy from the set-aside hideous abominations and counters at him to the Clover Club Lounge. Shuffle the rest of that encounter set, the set aside striking fear encounter set, and the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Move all investigators and hanging gates enemies from the Labella Luna to the Clover Club Lounge. Remove Labella Luna from the game. So, what this means is uh, searching for Easy gets discarded because it's attached to Labella Luna, which is removed from the game. 
so we didn't have to deal with the simple easy, which is great. But uh, we'll get one random enemy from these guys. So we get the servant of the lurker and the rest of these and the striking fear encounter set will get shuffled and I think we shoveled the encounter discord part too. Okay, and uh, just mark that enemy this. Then uh, just double checking. So we shuffled the encounter set, uh, discard pile, and the encounter sets. Uh, we moved everything from the Papella Luna, we moved it from the game, and that is it. We still get an encounter card for this turn. This Hunted Down. There are no unengaged criminal enemies to play. Hunted Down gets searched. If there is uh, one or more unengaged criminal enemies you play, each of them moves one location towards you. Each criminal enemy that engages you as a result of this effect makes an immediate attack. Ouch. So, this actually killed us. Well, funny thing. Uh, this both move here. They both have uh, two damage. I can take three damage. Yeah, well, that happened. So <laughs> even if uh, this was going really well, we would have uh, resigned this turn, but uh, the encounter deck just decided to hunt us down, so to speak. So let's read this card again. Revelation, if there are no unengaged criminal enemies in play, hunted down, get search. There are one or more unengaged criminal enemies in play. Each of them moves one location towards you. Each criminal enemy that engages you as a result of this effect makes an immediate attack. So these both engage me because they don't have a loof. They both attack me for a total of four damage. So we could soak one on Dr. Francis Morgan, but we still take three, which is enough to just barely defeat us. So, that was really unfortunate, but uh, this is Arkham Horror for you. Uh, you never know when you're gonna die from a random encounter card, even if you have plenty of health or sanity left or something like that. But uh, the deck pretty much worked as I intended it to, so I was able to evade uh, enemies, but as you could see, maybe killing the enemies would have been a better idea. So we wouldn't take that much damage from them in the end. But these are the choices you have to live with. So uh, hope you had some ideas on how to build decks. So thanks for watching and until next time.